Hi everyone and everyone new who is new to our channel. Welcome back to Imagine Blue and today we're gonna cover Arcane. This is a hot topic amongst us as friends and amongst the Netflix community. And we wanted to go in depth into episode three because there were a lot of key events here that really changed the course of the animation. And I wanted to open it up to you guys and ask, how did you guys think about episode three and what events did you guys think changed the storyline? I want to start off talking about the title of the episode because I feel like the title is sort of a message that not just applies to the episode but also applies to the series, which is the base of violence is necessary for change. And this is very interesting because it's like, literally, this is the episode because of the violence that changes the whole dynamic. Mm. And it's interesting because not just that we have that as kind of the theme, but even Silco, when he's talking about, he kind of explains it of like, that's well, his whole thing. Yeah, that's his whole philosophy. Yeah. So it's like, it's a very interesting, um, already the title itself is getting us to something that's very, um, you know, amazing and building up to something great. But what, what do you guys think is just with the title alone and how that plays with the overall I did not realize that was the title. It's, it's, <laughs> a, it's Silko's quote. It's like, yeah, he's, he's like, quote. this is the base violence necessary for change. And I mean, you guys hit the nail on the head. Like he, that's everything that he's about. Like, you know, you gotta crack a few eggs to make an omelet. And he's always, he's always been that way. And he's an honest dude. But what's also interesting about it, and I know this is a little bit out of episode three, but still ties to the whole title is that in theory, you can make the argument that with everyone's sort of goal, there is some sort of violence that comes out of it. And they're all doing it for the sake of change. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, it's, he's kind of just admitting something that's like a nature within all of us that, yo, I know it's fucked up, but it's like, we need this kind of thing to make things change. Otherwise, we can get into it. And that's the whole, that was the whole conflict between Silco and Vander. The, the thing that broke them apart was they both wanted change, but then it got to a point where Vander was no longer willing to partake in the violence necessary to um, affect that kind of change. And so that kind of, that broke the bond between Silco and Vander, where Silco was, he was much more willing to do whatever it takes to get this change that was necessary. It didn't matter what kind of violence was was happening along the lines. And so it kind of, it's it's it brings up this interesting philosophical question of how much do the ends really justify the means yes and if, if the means are bloody and violent does that even if it causes the change that you wanted is it worth it in the end yeah and this is where this is the first time in this episode where you start seeing silk gold not as just like some you know power hungry dude it's like or just a regular villain. villain yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. but this is the first time we actually get to see this guy and he even said it that what's the point of doing this and he says we need it for respect mm. which is sort of the theme with a lot of these lower people where it's like we're just trying to get our respect they've been treating us like shit. we need to get respect right and this is where we first get to see that and that's where this again this is the starting the turning point of that this show is no longer going to be this simplistic kind of like Oh, you know, they've been fucked up by the poor people, so they want to get yeah. revenge. It's more of like there's a need necessary there's a necessity to do this kind of stuff. So. Or it's more of people who have been wronged and people who have been oppressed, people who don't have that privilege. And it's it's a very deep episode. And I think this episode is really I mean, even with the name, this episode's dedicated to Silco. Um yeah. and and it's interesting too that you bring up the bond between Silco and Vander because I feel like that's what this whole episode is. Um, there's a there's a bond that's broken, but also a bond that's still there mm. that'll never be broken. Um, and when I don't know if should I get into the events? I guess yeah, yeah we like, can talk events. Uh, okay, yeah. perfect. So spoilers and everything is okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had a review, so yeah. you know. It's, okay, that's true. <laughs> um, so like when when I think starting the very beginning when Vander decides to sacrifice himself instead of Vi. Um, and then Silco comes up and, and that's when they have that confrontation. Um, it just gets the ball rolling, rolling. And then in the end where there's like a flashback between him and Silco, uh, fighting and, uh, Silco being bested and then re uh, vice versa back to the present when Vander's bested, like these are such like pivotal moments within this episode that really, I want to say like really brings attention to the bond that they have. And it's kind of in similar in relation to the bond that 
or foreshadows the bond that Vi and Jinx or Powder will have. Okay. Yes. I was going to go into that one foreshadowing of it because in one of the first earlier moments of seeing, we get to see Silco in the pool kind of just, you know, floating, whatever. But at some point, we get the same thing. Well, not exactly the pool, but kind of a foreshadowing with Jinx. There's a part when the explosion falls in. Yeah, there's a frame floating. where she's like bawling. It's yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. It's like a good justification. Or Did justification. not notice that. So that's another yeah, thing. There, I mean, it's when okay. she like blows up the Yeah, the building. and she's like happy because she exactly. thinks she did something right. Exactly. Yep, she didn't. It's like her descent into, I don't know, madness or like morally wrong things, like you mm -hmm. can it's, say. It's the beginning. Uh, yeah. And it, it is, I like that we're bringing up like the differences between vander and silco because like they really at this point in their lives are like on opposite ends of the spectrum because like even silco he's like i don't even hate you anymore it's just you are so fundamentally different from me like you're willing to die for the cause but you're not willing to fight for the cause like mm -hmm. he can't even comprehend that kind of like just like that's wrong to him and and it's like and like you can kind of understand where both of them are coming from because like vander now has this deep understanding that like this oppression that we're like feeling is like systematic like it's it's a huge problem that can't be solved by like this or one thing or violence alone like you know so he's made his choice to like live with it and do the best he can to like make sure everyone around him is safe whereas Silco he's still got like the fight in him and he's ready to sacrifice as many people as he can to get what he wants um and like I don't know it was just that episode like you said set the framework for like how things were gonna go between Vi and Jinx in, in a really in a really great way. I think know? another thing that was also something that stood out to me is because if you watch episode one and then even at the ending of um or at least the not the like the exact ending, but the last scene that has Vi talking to Powder and she's all like, We're gonna get our respect and you see them like looking at the it pans up to the freaking um city, right? Um what's interesting is like when you watch that whole episode, you would think especially with the group it's like okay we're gonna see these groups they're gonna be the ones who are gonna make the change you know it's yeah. like these old people they're kind of done with it whatever but it's up until this episode when we start seeing the fact that the consequences behind powder's um weapon where we see two of their teammates are dead yeah it automatically again the dynamic of how we look mm -hmm. at these types of shows because yeah. for those of us who watch a lot of these action shows where they deal with these kinds of things or the protagonists is, or these young kids or they're going to go make change the system the system's screwed up yeah. we would think that okay we're going to have these kids there's going to be this group of people they're going to be a team yeah. but it's this episode that's like yeah. screw that <laughs> we got something else coming up it no, could have easily it could have easily been a thing where it's like okay the old guard is um obsolete and now these we need these new like young fresh kids like that type to come of in and make yeah. the change necessary yeah. but then you see the past repeat itself <laughs> literally <laughs> with the new the new kids who were supposed to be the the hope of of the future they're repeating the mistakes of the past and it's such a it's so much more interesting when that it's it feels yeah. more real mm -hmm. in that sense because yeah. it's it's almost as if I mean, yeah, it's this idealized um, hope that, okay, the younger generation is going to come up and, and it's always going to be an improvement. It's always going to be progress. But in reality, like that rarely is the case. And it, it kind of, that uh, that only happens when when things really go right. But more often than not, we make yeah. the same mistakes that the past has made over and over again. And the hope is just that like we don't make the mistakes as bad as the past did. But that it's 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 much more real this way. That's, yes. a, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a very good point. Not just to subvert our expectations. It's something that we can kind of relate to because, like you know, generational trauma is something that we are all de dealing mm -hmm. with. You know, because it's like the repercussions of the actions of the people who came before us is something like we'll always deal with. And yeah. seeing that like translated into this show and done in like a super good dramatic way is, I don't know, you can't help but but feel it and then just kind of revel in the tragedy i like <laughs> that you bring that up sorry um that because you brought up the whole like the younger generation trying to change and mean progress because this also brings back with jace's side of the story where right. he's picking up with the council and he's like okay we finally have magic and we yeah. kind of see how even though um now i'm forgetting his little Heimerdinger. <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> thanks for saving me uh, even though what hammer talks kind of going back to the whole like yo like i don't believe this match is going to help us it's mm -hmm. been danger whatever you know, Jace coming from his like youthfulness, being like, yo, man, I can see this being the next thing. And then even the fact that Mel, because Mel's like the youngest one, I could think, in the council. 
of all of them so far. Uh, yeah, the council. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. She's even more into that whole, yeah, you're right. Like, yeah. we need yeah. to do this. So it kind of goes back to what you're saying about the whole, like, the younger people are always the ones who are want to be the the, like the force change. of change. And, yeah. and you yeah. can say, I mean, based on Heimerdinger's memories and knowledge, you could say that Jace and Victor are kind of repeating history as well. I yeah, mean, yeah, which is seeing that. One of the things that I talked about in, in the general review that we did was that Heimerdinger was too secretive about what he knew concerning yeah. magic and it kind of that unwillingness to be open and transparent with jace kind of led to this kind this recklessness that we see develop throughout and you might also be able to argue that that same thing happens with vander um especially yeah. in his relationship with uh with, with the kids yeah, yeah. with vi and, and powder and all of them yeah. um where maybe if he was a bit more open because you see the frustration of Vi and the rest of them when they want to fight, they want to make change, but Vander is kind of, seems like this brick wall um, that is not allowing them to make the change that is necessary. And instead of, in, instead of opening up and like being transparent with them and kind of trying to explain uh, the, the reality of the past, he kind of just shuts it down. And yeah. he doesn't, he's not open with them. And so you can argue that the same dynamic is being played out um, in the upper world as it is in, in the lower world. I think there's another variable here. Besides Heimerdinger and Vander's uh, ability to not like open up to the kids or to Jason Victor, I think it's also um, them just not acknowledging what they're trying to do and like the appreciation because. Um, in further episodes, Jason Victor spent like so hard to come up with these these uh, like equipment that will help the Undercity, right, or help the world. But Heimerdinger's like, cool, let's wait ten years before you guys perfect it, right. and that was it. Yeah. But I think it's more so like they like they also need to be appreciated and acknowledged mm -hmm. for the work that they're trying to do or their thought process and the change that they're trying to make, um, and then maybe just explained thoroughly like why these steps have to be taken. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. it was more so like a brush, like off the shoulder, like, uh, like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, you made that. That's nice. Wait yeah. 10 years. You it know? certainly felt like that. He was brushing them off. When yeah. in reality, it's like, we can see like as an audience, like Jason and Victor were being like ignorant because like their, yeah. their tools or equipment look like weapons. Like they <laughs> yeah. look yeah. and feel dangerous. But yeah, it does feel like an affront by Heimerdinger because he's just like brushing it off and again not being transparent and mm -hmm. then, you know that leads to them you know wanting to go against him and whatnot. Right. I also want to bring up one uh, very important thing that was also in this episode with, with the tone which is the violence and the fight scenes because it's this episode where we really see like even the way it begins people are getting killed mm. um you see Vi being upset and almost being like oh no I don't know if uh Vendor is going to be alive and stuff like that and then we just see by even being able to fight people and we also get to see good core and whatnot so this also changed the dynamic of the show of seeing like this isn't like i mean the first episode did as after rewatching the first episode does show a little slow violence slow-mo fight <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah it was a slow-mo fight so it does show that but this episode really shows like it for most part it, it was went like hardcore anything. it went hardcore yeah. it really shows yeah. that if you're wondering what kind of like I know it's probably like, you know, like, e is this it's dark teen or is it like <laughs> kind of whatever? It's like, no, this is the kind of show we get. So it's this is dark. the episode that changes that dynamic. Oh, so I think mm. throughout the series to me, I think it's like the most violent episode with yeah. like the most like intense imagery of, of all the episodes still for me. But it really changed the voice of the rest of the story for me because because they were, they really drove it home, like how close they were to escaping the plan that Vi and everybody had. And they really drove, like the the underlying theme, I think, is that Jinx, be, like Powder becomes Jinx. Yeah. And they really, really drove that home with how Powder, like, just wants to do good. But every time she wants to do good, it just ends up, like, becoming a shit show, right? Yeah. And and especially when Milo and, I forgot the other character's name, but like when- Flagor. Yes, when they were d about done, they were about to escape through the hole, and everything yeah. blew up, and and Jinx was floating. Like that was that really hit me, and I was just like, wow, this is a great, great episode. Yeah, and yeah. and they even 
they even like played it off with Vander telling Milo, "Oh, you can do this, you can do this." Oh, yeah, and just, just yep. all these great moments for these oh, characters. Yeah, that's beautiful. And when that's... when Sire, 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 Sire Silco, Sire, yeah, oh, no, 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 the guy with the glasses when he's like he's trying to make the hole for them to escape. Flicker, yeah, yes, him when he was just like, "We're gonna make it home" yeah, in the very yeah, beginning, yeah. and I was just like, "Hell yes!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Setting us up for subversion. And after he made that hole and he stood there, I was like, "Oh, such a triumphant scene." And yes. I'm like, <laughs> I, no, I mean, I've, even last time we talked about this, I was like, uh, things are going a little yep. too well. You like, can't what's help. going on here? And then all the tragic <laughs> shit happened. And I was like, okay, well, that happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I also think, so this is like the last episode of the first uh, arc, arc yeah. or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and then I think it's the perfect episode to have, you know, that time skip after. Because, you know, we don't know how many years passed, but seeing like... Um, you know, unveiling the unveiling of Jinx, basically fresh off of like, you know, what happened, all the events that happened in episode three, it kind of really hits home, like how traumatic events can like affect the course of your life and, and pretty much just affect you forever. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I, I know there was a break in between, but like, you know, for all of us who probably watched it all throughout, like in one like shot, it still worked perfectly. Yeah, there's definitely so many correlations within this episode that you could apply to like real life situations or or just anything I think in that that you're going through in general. Um, this is a very deep episode. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it other than that. Yeah, they you know they should all gone to therapy after, but they didn't. That's why, <laughs> yeah. that's why we yeah. have the whole rest yeah. of the series. <laughs> yeah, but, but I feel and we'll like have I, season two. But, but can you make an argument that for like most shows that deal with violence, that the answer is just go to therapy? therapy. <laughs> yeah, I guess it doesn't exist back then. And then if Steve only if times. only mental health was a <laughs> is only, a real if, thing they, in our case. They just arcade. need Naruto to do talk no jutsu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's all this. It's, this whole thing is really about daddy issues and, and how our fathers affect the course of our lives. <laughs> You're yeah. right about that but even but not even that it's also about how daughters can affect you know yeah because silco at the end of this episode took in jinx and in my head i was like oh no like is he is there an uh, ulterior motive or something around like him taking jinx in and granted i think there is but i feel like at the end of the episode when you see like silco embrace jinx it's almost like him giving a tribute to vander too like i killed you but I will take in one of your daughters. I, I okay. I, to be honest, I saw something different. To be honest, he's I, taking himself in. Is that what too. I that yeah. too. Yeah. Because I feel like he can see. Like I think there's multiple like ways to view there's it, right? Levels. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or yeah, there's definitely multiple levels, and you'll see that throughout the rest of the yeah. story that he views Jinx as a daughter. Yeah. But at that point in time, I see a little bit of that, but also a little bit of him like knowing how much. Uh, potential powder has with like her creations and her yeah. gadgets and whatnot, mm. and also yeah. kind of trying trying to capitalize on that. Yeah, 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 yeah for, for sure, for sure, for sure. But um, yeah, and then again, obviously the dynamic between powder and um Jinx we saw at the end, which was also pretty sad. There is one thing I didn't understand: is how did powder survive the explosion? Like it just seemed like she just got. I think she fell out. into water, right? They didn't show her fall in the water. They just showed her fly no, out. They did. She felt she lands in water. Oh, um, at the end, which just makes like the, Silco. Silco. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Silco. I don't remember seeing that. Yeah, it connects to Silco. Okay, so that, okay, perfect. that's even more important. More important. Yeah, part of me actually thought she died. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you wish, huh? When watching that episode, like the, for the first time, right? When you see all these characters dying, you're like, oh, did Powder die too? <laughs> Because, That'd be an yeah. interesting dynamic. And I think in the very beginning of this episode, uh, yes, it is when Vi hands her the like uh, gun that shoots like the the color powder or whatever, mm -hmm. and she's like, "Wherever you are, just um, like use this, and I'll find you." And then, of course, you know this that is a key moment because it happens again later on yeah. uh, in like episode six or something where powder remembers that that happens so there's there's i feel like there's so much foreshadowing yeah. in this episode they yeah. also foreshadow they kind of show that 
powder is clearly like unstable already. Like yeah. when Vi leaves her alone and says like you can't go with us, she like throws a fit, which is like honestly that's not too strange for a kid. Like yeah. not to say that she's like totally out there and there's something wrong with her. But I mean, again, that just emphasizes like how your developmental years are so important and that like, you know, children are so important. And, you know, unfortunately, she's like growing, growing up in this tumultuous time in this like awful place where she has no chance, you know, to be a good person. She's a product of, you know, of that society and just her surroundings, basically, which is kind of like. Um, it's like a psychological thing too basically is like she's got that she's fulfilling like what is expected of her from growing up in such like an awful tumultuous place yeah know? and then killing her friends didn't help so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah no that not at all especially when they were so close I was rooting for them so badly <laughs> yeah but I think I think that about like you know wraps up I, f I feel like our thoughts and um, our feelings on episode three. So I want you guys to comment down below and how you feel about this, you know, episode that really was a turning point for the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. And let us know your thoughts. Let us know if there's any specific scenes that you thought was really cool or something that you think we missed. But um, that's all for today. And make sure to like and subscribe. Peace. Peace. Peace.